I made this block of wood and these bolts go through the holes that already existed in the mounting flanges of the planer. The block of wood supports a 2 inch by 2 inch aluminum angle bar which is 1 8 inch thick material. This aluminum is a total length of 19 and 3 quarter inches. It's important for this bar to be vertical with the carriage of the planer as it moves up and down. So I check this space here, then I lower the carriage down to the bottom, check that space again, and make sure that they're the same. If they're not, I wiggled the aluminum bar until it was straight before I drilled the holes for the screws. Likewise, from this direction, you want this space to remain the same as the carriage moves up and down. On top of the carriage, there was already a bolt here which held a cable clamp for the power cord, and that bolt is a M4 0.7 thread, one centimeter long bolt. I drilled and tapped another identical hole. I made this bracket out of a piece of scrap steel, got some better screws from the hardware store, and I've spaced it 17 millimeters from this part of the aluminum because that's how much room is needed in order for the up and down mechanism of the Wixie to clear. I glued rare earth magnets to the bottom of the Wixie readout using this uh, instant bond. An alternative would be epoxy and those magnets will lock the readout to the metal bracket that I made, but still make it easy to remove. Plane that to two inches thick, and with digital calipers, it measures two inches plus three thousandths of an inch. And on the other side, it measures the same. And I plane that with the carriage locked in place, and I'm going to leave it there, and that'll be my reference to calibrate. So now the Wixi readout is gripping onto the steel plate with the magnets. The instructions for the Wixi say to mount this vertical scale so that the top of this base is even with the table, but that would mean the readout would have to be down here, and I want it up there tucked away, so I'm going to use a different method. Since the carriage is locked in the position that will plane a piece of wood to exactly two inches, I'm going to slide this scale down till the two inch mark is right at the top. Now holding the scale in that position, I'll transfer the lines for the holes that are in this frame that holds the scale onto the aluminum, and then drill corresponding holes into the aluminum and bolt the scale on. That'll keep it in that position. I drilled those holes in place without moving anything. So now the Wixie scale is bolted to the aluminum. There is a nut for one of the two bolts that holds the Wixie ruler to the aluminum angle and you can see that it's a short bolt so that it doesn't project too far out otherwise it would catch on the back of this display. And there's a little bit of play there just because the holes are larger than bolts which is handy because now with the magnets holding this in place I can move the scale to get that exact two inch line right on there that I want. This can lift up to tighten this nut. I'm still good. This block of wood is one and seven eighths inches wide which gives me just a little clearance in here between between the Wixie and the aluminum fence. On the other side it's hitting the bolt whose position was already tapped into the casting. So I kind of came out lucky there. I think if I was doing this again I'd make this two inches wide which would give me another eighth inch spare. Under this cover are two AAA batteries so they can be replaced without taking everything apart. To calibrate the digital readout I'll turn on it's in absolute, which is good. Push and hold this button till it flashes, and then I can use these up and down keys. Okay, that piece of wood, when I measured it with the calipers, came out at slightly over two inches. So I'm going to calibrate this to 2.00, which means the wood might come out a couple of thou oversized, just happens that way, which is not bad because it usually gets a very light sanding anyway. I'll do an accuracy and repeatability test and here I'm going to raise the carriage to 1 and 31 30 second of an inch. Then I'll lock the carriage in place. The same piece of wood that I used before, I ran it over the jointer again to get a dead flat surface. Now what I'm going to do is run the carriage all the way up and all the way down and then go back up to the same setting of uh, thir 1 and 31 30 seconds. So I've locked the carriage in place. I've got a different piece of wood, also freshly jointed. I'll run it through and see if it lines up with the same thickness as the other piece. So here's the two pieces on the jointer table. 
and I cannot feel any difference in height there. Very powerful tool to be able to thickness plane a piece of wood, do some other work, come back and thickness plane another piece of wood to the exact same thickness. Very handy in a project. Here I'm going to go for one inch. Here's a piece of wood freshly jointed. Pretty impressive. When I have a thin piece of wood, I find I get better results if I place it on a sled. And this sled I've measured to be 0 0.39 inches thick. So I'll set the carrot to 0 0.39 inches. Then I'll hit the incremental button. So that puts that point at 0. Now if I want to plane that strip to 0 0.25 inch thick, I can just come up to the quarter inch, lock the carriage. We get 0 0.252. Pretty good, close to a quarter inch. Here's a bug in the software you should be aware of. That's set to one inch. There's 25.4 millimeters in an inch. But when I hit the millimeter button, it goes to 26.2. So there's an offset. And that offset is consistent at any level. So what that means is, if you calibrate in inches, you can measure in inches. If you calibrate in millimeters, you can measure in millimeters. But you can't switch back and forth without recalibrating. So that's just good to be aware of.